Hi, kids. It's Granny. Wow. Wow. It's been the craziest few days. I got to tell you about it. We got the house tented for termites. That happened. And uh, Mike kind of pulled it together and helped quite a bit. We had to pack up the whole refrigerator and take all the food out of the pantry that was like, you know, box food and stuff. You can leave canned food and anything that's in an unopened jar. Everything in the refrigerator, we didn't have another refrigerator like you know, we don't have a garage refrigerator or anything. So we just had to, like, dump everything in the refrigerator. Then when we got home, of course, I had to do this huge shopping trip to kind of replenish what I had to throw away. Um, we had to move all of our stuff that we, like, boxed cereals, pastas, rice, beans, that kind of thing, and put them in our storage unit in our carport. And we had to pack up the two cats into cat carriers, which required several cans of gourmet cat food and a lot of coaxing and a little bit of grabbing and wrestling and scratching. But anyway, we got them in their carriers uh, kind of at the last minute, the morning of the tenting, put them in the back seat of the truck, I climbed in with them. Maya got in the front seat with Mike, and off we went to Motel 6. And we actually weren't supposed to check in until like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. This was about, I guess we had to leave the house at about 8.30, quarter to 9, something like that. We drove around for a little bit, and Mike said, well, I want to see where the motel is, just so I know. So we drove over there, and he saw the motel, and he goes, you know, I'm just going to ask him if by any chance we could pay him for half a day or something and get in there early. So he went in the office, and they said, no, go ahead, just go ahead, we'll give you your room now. So yay, that was cool, good old Motel 6 men, they leave the light on for you. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, we got into Motel 6. It was still kind of early in the day. Uh, Mike kind of just immediately went to sleep because, you know, this kind of thing is really exhausting for him. I mean, it's exhausting for anybody, but he needs his nappies. So he went nappy, and the cats I kind of situated, um, like, beside the bed next to the wall and I filled their little kitty litter box and put that kind of near the cat carriers and after they'd been there and kind of chilled for a while I went ahead and opened their carriers and let them out and they immediately headed right under the bed and they stayed under the bed like almost the whole time we were there on the, the final day they came out for a little while and started exploring but like, as soon as they started feeling at home, it was time to leave. But anyway, they managed to find a hole in the underside of the box spring of the bed. And they crawled up inside the box spring liner. And if you looked under the bed for the cats, which I did at one point, and panicked because I didn't see them. But then I saw these two kind of sagging areas under the box spring and I said oh they crawled up in there made themselves little nests so I was just like praying that they didn't pee or anything in there and they didn't thank god but you know I brought the litter box so they had that and and they used it they were really good kitties <laughs> yay uh, they didn't eat much while we were there they just kind of wanted to hide um, so they came home and were hungry as little dragons when we got in the house. Um, so we were there two days. Now, let me tell you, my roommate, our roommate, has sleep apnea so bad. And 
he doesn't know it because, I mean, generally the man sleeps alone. And I think he has for quite some time. And who's going to tell you, you know, that you've got an issue unless they're sleeping near you? So he was sleeping in the other bed in the motel room. And what what he did was he would, like, be absolutely silent for about a full minute. And then he would start this outrageous snoring. It was really, like, not normal snoring. It was kind of like like he was suddenly breathing, you know. And um, It was hard to explain. So, anyway, I, I watched him. And I realized that it looked like he, like, stopped breathing for that minute that he was quiet. And then he would start this horrible snoring. I And I feel bad for the guy, and I'm concerned. And I am going to try and talk him into getting an appointment. And I think what they do is they give you a CPAP inhaler thing that you have to wear at night. And that sounds kind of uncomfortable. But it's better than, like, not breathing. That's kind of dangerous. I, I mean, we, we knew that he snored because, you know, he's in the next bedroom in, where we live. But, you know, I had never witnessed the not breathing part. So, uh, anyway, hope he's going to do something about that. And so I'm sorry I didn't vlog any of it. Um, <laughs> I could have vlogged that. The snoring was really quite something. But, you know, I don't feel like it's right to videotape somebody when they're sleeping. That just seems like explo exploitation or victimizing somebody somehow without their consent. And that'd be messed up. So... I, I didn't do that. And the kitties, you know, I thought, well, I'll videotape the kitties in the motel room. That'll be funny. But they really didn't do anything funny except for make a couple of little saggy places under the box spring. And most of the time we were there, Michael just kind of slept and watched TV. Uh, I kind of went in and out of the motel room because it alternated between being really hot and cold in there and when it got cold I would just go out and sit in the truck because it was warm and I could have videotaped something out there I guess but I was really kind of grumpy while we were there I mean I maintained a good attitude and I was pleasant to be with but you know the second day that we were there was my birthday and most of the day Mike just slept and we had KFC the night before, so I kind of didn't want KFC again on my birthday. But we really, like, didn't do anything. I mean, the guys said happy birthday to me, but I felt kind of forgotten and forlorn and felt sorry for myself, I guess, a little bit, maybe. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> I wanted to go to Kmart and buy a kayak. But, you know, we're really trying to save our money right now. We're going to have to get a car pretty soon. And, you know, we're going to either need to buy a used one outright or make a down payment on something. So, car just went down my street backwards. Cool. Um, so, we're kind of pinching pennies. So, anyway, after we got home, Mike took me out for Mexican food last night restaurant of my choice. We went to Martha's Mexican Food in Sebastopol. It's a neat little restaurant. Um, it's been around for like 20 years, so you know what's good. Right? And they have these adorable chairs, and I'm not sure how to describe them, but they look like they probably came from Mazatlan or something. They're these beautiful carved wooden chairs that they have painted in these beautiful colors. And they're carved so that the backs um, have, like, relief images of women carrying water or beautiful sunflowers or um, 
patches of vegetables. They're just absolutely gorgeous chairs. I'm not sure how to explain them, but I wish I knew how to make some like that. They're, they're beautiful. Somebody is a talented wood carver, I think, somewhere down in South America. So anyway, right now Maya and I are heading off to Safeway. I have to pick up a prescription. Um, I might vlog a little more this afternoon, but I've got to get stuff ready for church tomorrow. You know, I want to vlog more, you guys. It's just like life's getting in the way. And I really want to talk to you about um, something I've been thinking a lot about. Um, kind of regards my mental health and something that I'm going to address finally after 58 years of struggle. Um, we'll talk about it later. But in any case, um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to add anything to this video or if you're just going to see a sign-off here in a second. But um, there goes a car going the right way. All's right in the world. Love you guys. Okay. I just realized that that was 11 minutes I just filled right there with all that babbling. So now the question is, do I edit it? If I edit it, it's not going to be 11 minutes. If I, what the heck is going on? What, have you been watching this this whole time and nobody said anything? You guys, when my hair is doing that, you got to tell me. I have preposterous hair. It's preposterous. <sighs> I love you guys. Take care of each other. Stay happy. Stay healthy. And don't forget Granny loves you. I God, I'm really just gushing with love today, aren't I? I love you. <laughs> Bye.